So I've been looking into camera systems to upgrade to from my Pocket 4K that I've been using for about three years now, but I told myself that I would wait until NAB to see what comes out, because if nothing else, it's gonna lower the price of existing cameras. And if you're not sure what NAB is, it's essentially a giant broadcast event where all sorts of new camera techs announced. Anyway, seeing as I'm an irrelevant nobody who once again couldn't find a sugar daddy to fly me out, sadly, I won't be attending this year. But I won't let that stop me from blathering on about some of the camera tech that I'd like to see released this year or sometime in the near future. Starting with a new Blackmagic camera. For years, people have been clamoring for an updated form factor to the Blackmagic line of cameras. However, Blackmagic seemed content to reuse the same body designs that they've been using since 2016 and 2019, respectively. And look, I get that Blackmagic is not a giant corporation in the same way that Sony, Panasonic, and Canon are, and that their recycling of parts is one of the ways that they keep the prices down, but the demand is there. Everywhere you look online, you're gonna see people begging and pleading for Blackmagic to offer them a box-style form factor. And while I'm not 100% on board with that, it's definitely preferable to the current options we have. And something is coming. Blackmagic started this countdown on the front page of their website. Their dedicated camera tester, John Brawley, has said what's coming is not to be missed. Honestly, at this point, it feels like there's way too much smoke for there not to be fire. And personally, what I'd like to see is something like this, a smaller, more modular Ursa style camera. I'd like it to come equipped with a locking L mount, kind of like how the Komodo X did with the RF mount, internal NDs, an OLPF filter, an integrated V-mount plate would be essential, but if they can throw in an optional NPF power adapter for a smaller setup, kind of the same way Kinefinity does, that would be awesome as well. I'd like it to come with red DSMC2 style monitor pins to eliminate the need for cables with a dedicated monitor port in the front for relocating the monitor if need be. Speaking of that monitor, a high bright touchscreen monitor with camera control of Blackmagic's fantastic menu system would be just perfect. Blackmagic giving us the choice between a 5 inch or a 7 inch option the same way they do with the Blackmagic Video Assist would just be the icing on the cake. As far as the sensor goes, obviously we'd all like more dynamic range and I'd really rather them go in that route as opposed to the resolution route that they've been taking recently. But if they're content to use some variation of the 12K sensor that they've already put a lot of R&D into, honestly I wouldn't complain. There has been some speculation of them stitching two 12K sensors together to achieve Vista Vision, a la the Alexa LF, which would be a bold move resulting in a 16K sensor. But I personally feel like them going that route would push the cost up too high. 6K seems like the sweet spot as far as resolution, but honestly, I can go with another 4.6K, 4K. I'm cool with all of it. I'd really like to see a more squared off sensor for anamorphic shooting. 4x3, 5x4, or especially 6x5 open gate would be absolutely perfect. Also, Blackmagic, can you please just bring back ProRes? It's an industry standard for a reason, and you're really painting yourselves into a corner by not offering it anymore. Staying within the realm of cameras, but without being brand specific, the next camera I'd like to see is a mirrorless camera with both IBIS and internal ND filters. With the Sony Burano laying the groundwork of proving a camera is capable of having both IBIS and built-in NDs, I'm curious to see which manufacturer is gonna be the first to integrate it into a smaller mirrorless body. I honestly think this race is gonna come down to Sony, who already have the camera tech, and the brand that'll benefit the most from it, Panasonic. There have been blueprints circulating around the internet regarding the successor to the S1H having internal NDs, but Panasonic IBIS is so good, it'd be a shame for them to sacrifice it for those NDs. If they can find a way to implement those two into a camera capable of shooting at a cropless 60 frames per second, they'll absolutely have a winner on their hands. And who knows, maybe the growth of those sales could lead to them opening back up their cinema division, at which point you'd potentially be looking at a camera that would be combining Panasonic's feature set with their newly implemented autofocus and the IQ and the color science of the Vericam. Now I'm not gonna go so far as to call that the perfect camera, but that thing would absolutely shake up the camera market. Meanwhile, literally all Sony would have to do is implement those internal NDs and open gate into something like an FX3 Mark II, and they'll just continue to run the camera market for the next three to five years. Someone is going to release this camera. Honestly, at this point, it's just a matter of when. The third piece of gear that I would like to see released would be two-time squeeze anamorphics for under $3,000 per lens. Admittedly, five years ago, this request would have been laughed off as an absolute joke, and rightfully so. But we're in the middle of an anamorphic renaissance right now, and some brand, presumably a Chinese one, is going to knock this barrier down. And it may be sooner than you think. 
As of right now, the affordable two-time squeeze anamorphic options are the Atlas Orions at 9,000 per lens, the DZO Film Pavos at $5,500 per lens, and the Laowa Proteus at 5,000 per lens. Yeah, those are your uh, affordable options. For me personally, if I was to construct my own dream set, I'd probably make something along the lines of a Gauss Shock designed, relatively compact and lightweight set, have close focus under two feet with controlled barrel distortion, subtle indigo slash violet flares, all at T2 without chromatic aberration, completely overtaking the entire image, and I would marry those goddamn lenses. So essentially what I'm asking for is knockoff Apollos at one eighth the price, which on its face sounds utterly ridiculous, unless of course you take into account that the Blazer Remus set is essentially knockoff Atlas Mercury's at one eighth the price. Now, I don't know if it's gonna be Blazar or if it's gonna be a different manufacturer or when it's gonna happen, probably won't be NAB, but at some point, in the near future, someone is gonna break this $3,000 barrier for two time stretch lenses, and I for one can't wait. I mumbled when I said lenses. Whatever, I'm keeping it. Now, the last piece of camera tech that I'd like to see announced is the DJI, or any other brand, standalone LiDAR system. Please don't start screaming at me that you can use DJI's current LiDAR system off gimbal. I am aware of that. I heard that it works reasonably well. I've also heard that it's a giant pain in the ass. What I'm referring to is something that doesn't require a gimbal at all. Now, there have been rumors of a standalone LiDAR system basically since the original 3D Focus was announced. However, it's always been tied to their existing ecosystem, whether that's the RS3 Pro or their wireless transmission system. It's been years, DJI. You've milked out all the sales you're gonna get from the RS3 Pro. You're apparently about to come out with an RS4. You've already got the technology. Can you just give us the standalone system? Introducing DJI Focus Pro. So yeah, that about wraps it up. What do you think? Is there anything you guys are hoping for? Do you think my wants are completely asinine? Let me know in the comments below. We can have a conversation about it because I need something to do while I'm on the toilet. Thanks for watching all the way through. I'm gonna go back to staring at the Blackmagic countdown screen now. Farewell, friends.